Hi, the question today is about floating and sinking. And part A of the question reads, state the law of flotation. The law states, a floating object displaces its own weight of the fluid in which it floats. Part B of the question, the figure below shows a block of mass 25 grams and density 200 kilograms per cubic meter submerged in a certain liquid and suspended from a uniform horizontal beam of negligible weight by means of thread. A mass of 2 grams is suspended from the beam as shown. So we have the diagram right here. Then Roman 1, determine the upthrust force acting on the block. Before we determine the upthrust force acting on the block, let's consider the following from the diagram. In the diagram, we can see the application of both Archimedes principle and the principle of moments. So considering this system to be at equilibrium, then the force as a result of the two grams mass will effect a clockwise moment. And then you also have the force as a result of the block submerged in the liquid, that is force F, effecting anti-clockwise moment. Now the force F here happens to be the weight of the solid when it is submerged in the liquid. Now this weight is not the actual weight of this block, but we'll refer to that as the apparent weight. It's apparent because it's not real. And that occurs as a result of the upthrust force which acts on the block the moment it is submerged into the liquid. Okay, with that information, we can therefore proceed on to determine the upthrust force. So first thing, let's determine the force as a result of the two grams mass here. Now, force is given as mass times gravity. In other words, we are determining the weight of this mass here, the two grams mass. So we obtain that as mass times the gravitational field strength. And that is given as two grams, two grams converted into kilograms. We divide by a thousand and then we multiply by the gravitational field strength, which is 10. And that should give us 0 0.02 newtons. Well, applying the principle of moments, we'll say for a system at equilibrium, the sum of clockwise moments equals the sum of anticlockwise moments. That is about the same point. And for this case, the pivot point here. So that the clockwise moments is determined by first telling the force that will cause the clockwise moments we've seen is the force as a result of the two grams mass. So that force we've worked it out here as 0 0.02 times the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot, which is 30 centimeters. So we have 30 centimeters. I will use 30 centimeters without converting it into meters. It's not a big deal. If you wish, you can also convert it into meters. It makes no difference in this case. Now, apparently this is the only force affecting clockwise moments on this side. So for the sum of anti-clockwise moments, we realize we have force F affecting anti-clockwise moments. And therefore we'll have force F times the perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and the pivot and that is 40 centimeters. So we'll have F times 40. Now working out this, the right hand side becomes 40 F and the left hand side becomes 0 0.6. So that we have 40 F is equal to 0 0.6. Dividing both sides by 40, we realize that the force F is equal to 0 0.015 Newtons. Well, the next thing we need to take note of here is that this force here is the apparent weight of the block and therefore we can say the weight of the block in the liquid is 0 0.015 newtons. Now in order to determine the upthrust force we must also know the weight of the block in air and the weight of the block in air is obtained 
by having the mass, which is 25 grams. You'll have to convert it into kilograms by dividing by a thousand. So we have mass times gravitational field strength, which is 10. That is according to this. And that should give us 0 0.25 newtons. Now, with the weight of the block in the liquid and the weight of the block in air, we can determine the upthrust. An upthrust is obtained as weight of the block in air minus weight of the block in the liquid. And that is 0 0.25 minus 0 0.015. And that finally gives us 0 0.235 newtons. For Roman 2, we are required to calculate the density of the liquid. Now the density of the liquid is given us mass of the liquid displaced all over the volume of the liquid displaced. Now we'll first begin by determining the volume of the liquid displaced. One thing we need to take note of here is that as the solid is submerged into the liquid, then it displaces its own volume of the liquid. And for that reason, if we are able to determine the volume of the block, which is mass over density, so the mass of the block is 0 0.025 kilograms. We had 25 grams converted into kilograms is 25 over 1000, and that is 0 0.025 kilograms all over the density and the density of the block we are told is 200 kilograms per cubic meter. So that should give us 0 0.000125 cubic meters. Now that volume of the block should be equivalent to the volume of the liquid displaced because the block displaces its own volume of the liquid. So the volume of the liquid is equal to the volume of the block. And for that reason, we have it as 0 0.000125 cubic meter. Now with the volume of the liquid displaced, as we can see it in the formula here, we are left with the mass of the liquid displaced. Now, according to Archimedes principle, upthrust is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. And for that reason, we can have here as upthrust is equal to mass times the gravitational field strength. This will help us determine the mass of the liquid displaced as we are required to in this formula. So the mass of the liquid displaced is given as upthrust, which we already gotten as 0 0.235, all over the gravitational field strength which for this case is 10 newtons per kilogram. And when you divide, we get that as 0 0.0235 kilograms. Now, with the mass of the liquid and volume of the liquid displaced, we can therefore determine the density of the liquid, and that is given as mass over volume. So we have mass of the liquid displaced over the volume of the liquid displaced. So the mass is 0 0.0235 and then we'll divide that by the volume which is 0 0.000125 cubic meter. So that worked out gives us 188 kilograms per cubic meter. So that is the density of the liquid. With that, we mark the end of the solution to this problem. I want to thank you for staying with me until this end. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.